All right, let me try this again. So, because I had some stuff written down wrong there. All right, first trip. Uh, this is Thursday. Uh, I'll worry about Friday on uh, Friday. I might have another trip coming out on me today or half a trip. I'm not sure. Probably some local yokel junk because I'm like, I'm in Midway, Georgia, and that's 45 minutes from Fort Wentworth. So, first trip went from Statesboro, Georgia to Irvington, Alabama. Had to grab an empty in Port Wentworth, run to Statesboro, grab a load from a DC, and run to Irvington. Um, and then I went from Irvington, uh, had a pickup in Grand Bay, which was down the road from the Irvington, DC. And I stopped at. I had two. It was funny. I had two truck stops picked out uh, a pilot and a loves. And I figured since I had credit at the pilot, I'd grab a shower. But it turns out that the pickup in Grand Bay was a block away from the Loves. So I went to the Loves instead. Picked up at one of our relay yards that we ran out from a junkyard or tow yard, whatever you want to call it. Might as well be a junkyard with all the junk that was in there. Um... Dropped my empty, grabbed a loaded, and went to take it to a grocery store chain. Now, I picked it up. Uh, it was really low on the ground. It had been raining there a lot. It had about 20,000, 25,000 pounds in it of water, um, which caused it to sink into the mud, but it wasn't so deep. Only I needed a couple of cranks on the low side of the... Uh, um, on the low side of the crank to get it to where I could actually get up underneath it. I don't even know if it needed that. I backed up. I just didn't want to bang it and then uh, make it sink anymore. So I made sure I cranked it a few times and got out and saw I could get up underneath it and did that. So I went to the grocery store, right, and uh, got there early in the morning. Uh, drop time was 6 a.m. I got there at 5.30, I believe. Um, Nobody said anything really. I was waiting on one guy to finish getting unloaded. It was in a reefer truck. There was a coke guy in front of me, but he said he wasn't going through the door. So all I had to do was uh, get in the door whenever that guy left. So that guy left, and then the store manager came out after I backed in and busted open the rear. It had one of our seals on it, which I found kind of odd. Um, loads coming from customers, uh, unless it's recycled stuff, isn't going to have one of our seals on it. So manager came out and talked to me and said, uh, is that water? I said, yeah, it's 10 pallets of water. He said, well, we refused that Friday and we're refusing it again today. It turns out that uh, whoever their salesperson is and the ordering person, uh, it's a miscommunication between them and the shipper and so on and said that they have already given them like 18 pallets of water and that was 10 more and he's got nowhere to put it, which I can understand. I mean, uh, 28 pallets in a, in a grocery store about the size of a food line. I mean, um, small grocery stores, IGA is like that, you know. Uh, there ain't no room for 30 pallets of water. So, got on the phone with a DBL who wasn't available at the time and uh, said uh, get back in touch with them in 30 minutes, which would have been 8 o'clock their time when customer service gets back in. So I called them back and uh, I told them, I was like, well, I can just run it back to where I picked it up from because I got a relay. They hit me back to back. I mean, it was I had to relay sitting in after the relay. So that was actually a decent area for the time. I already had a load waiting on me, even though I hadn't even picked up that next load, um, which, hey, dig it. I'll take the money. Um, so ran that back, sealed it back up put the sheets back in there and left a little note because this person had put their phone number on there. I was like, I'm not calling you at 530 in the morning. Uh, first of all, you know, you might be on the road. You ain't supposed to answer the phone when you're on the road working for us. I ain't calling you like that, especially at 530 in the morning. Some of these people don't get up when I do. Um, so, took it back, dropped it off, left a note saying, speak with store manager before you bust these doors open because if not I mean you know you're gonna be wasting your time trying to drop a load that we're trying to get off of our trailer my guess is somebody's gonna end up eating the cost of storing the stuff on our trailer because you know it, it
it's got to go somewhere, right? Anyway, that, that's between the customer and Schneider, not not uh, I took it back. So the next load was from that same yard in uh, Irvington, right? Isn't that what I said? No, I'm sorry, Grand Bay. So Grand Bay to Theodore, back to Grand Bay, the grocery store, back to the drop lot. And then the next one was Grand Bay to Hattiesburg. Um, I didn't have anything eventful happen there. It was, it was rainy, wet. That was about it. That was the only events going on there. The usual traffic and stuff. It wasn't too bad because by the time I got back out there, it was like 8 o'clock this time. So ran that load, relayed it, dropped it, live unloaded it. Um, actually, that one was not a live unload. That one said it was going to be a live unload, took it to a plant. Um some weird stuff it's like pallets full of junk <laughs> pallets full of returns or whatever it, it looked like it was like uh one of those something you would get from like ollie's or something that was just a bunch of returned store items that were thrown in bins and then loaded onto a truck uh, you know you can buy truckloads of that stuff and uh for like five or ten grand and sell it on ebay and stuff like that and and you know there, there's y'all an idea sell y'all some stuff and make some money off of it but uh you gotta have the money to invest in that first and some place to store all that crap so i'm assuming that's what these people start out doing i don't know anyway i got there and they're like well this is just a relay area you got to take trailer down to another location so it's three miles down the road or whatever she, she wrote down on a sheet of paper and said you go out here you can't take a left you got because there's a median you got to go down and make a u-turn and i'm like i'm in a 53 foot trailer you want me to make a u-turn on a four lane with a median so i found a good spot and whipped it around and uh traffic in that area isn't to me, that's Sunday traffic. I mean, there's not really any traffic over there. So it was really easy to get turned around. It wasn't uh, it wasn't that bad. Um, so I dropped that. Got there, and they're like, well, it's just it's a drop. You can drop it and grab that empty, one of those two empties over there. So that's what I did. Uh, I dropped it in uh, uh, kind of like a garage door. I mean, there was it was a eight bay section. Um but it was like a carport, basically. I don't know, a warehouse with an enclosed garage that you can back your trailer into so you don't get wet while you're putting the trailer legs down, but you will get wet when you get out of the truck. Whatever. So I dropped that, grabbed uh, the empty, and was told to tow it to one of our paper people that's contracted to GP or somebody like that. So I took it over there, and that's where my next pickup was. So uh, I dropped the trailer, grabbed my load that was going from, and that was Hattiesburg to Hattiesburg, the, the empty. Yeah, I dropped that empty in Hattiesburg. No, I'm sorry, I dropped the load in Hattiesburg. And the other pickup was right there in Hattiesburg around a corner, or, I don't know, a few miles down the road. But it being that way, that's a zero mile to from one location to the other since it's right there. But I wasn't too worried about that. So I got there, and that was Hattiesburg to Lebanon, Tennessee. Gave me another 435 miles. The the previous Statesboro to Alabama was 530. Uh, um, Grand Bay to Theodore to Grand Bay was like 30-something, right around 30, something like that. Um, and then Grand Bay to Hattiesburg was about 110 or so. And then uh, Hattiesburg to Hattiesburg, that's zero miles because the way it's set up, so, uh, what am I saying? That wasn't even a trip. Hattiesburg to Hattiesburg. That was where I dropped the loaded and picked up the empty to go to my next load, which was the GP going from Hattiesburg to Lebanon, Tennessee for 435. So, I took that load and dropped it, and there was some confusion on the empty. I think it's got a either somebody stole that trailer out of the yard one of our drivers took it or I don't know what happened either that or the, the trailer never got uh, transposed somehow or I was dyslexic, somebody was I don't know, but uh, I had to talk to my DBL and uh, said, this is the trailer you got? I said, that's the trailer I had, man that's the one I got wrote down, I mean I wrote it down in three different places, so 
if I got that wrong three times, all they really got to do is look at the inspection, right? The DVIR at the end of the where the trailer drop is, because it wasn't on my assignment when I dropped it for a drop empty trailer, so I punched it in there again, uh, which is kind of weird, I guess, because I had an issue with it. It was showing up in a completely different location. I, I don't know. I don't know what happened with that. All I know is I told him this was the trailer that I had, and yes, I confirmed that was the trailer I had. So my sixth load was going from Clarksville, Tennessee, to Midway, Georgia. So they used up most of my day Wednesday, so I didn't have enough time to run all the way down here to Midway. I don't even think I would have made it. It was like a ten and a half hour run. I had to pick up an empty from from Lowe's uh, distribution center and. I swear I've been to a Lowe's before, and it wasn't like these guys were like, the security there was like Fort Knox, man. It was ridiculous. Um, it wasn't too bad, but it was like, and there was nothing there. There was, this is a huge, I'd say 750,000 to a million square foot facility, and there was maybe 40 trailers outside. And there was at least 100, 150 employees in there. I'm like, what are y'all doing in here? If you only got no trailers out there, why y'all wasting so much overhead with all these people running around in this building? So I, I don't know. I don't know what kind of. I don't know what they were doing there at Lowe's, but uh, whatever. Who knows? So I grabbed my empty from there, and I had to pick up at a tire manufacturer who also had security like Fort Knox. But I had to drive like a quarter mile. So Jill took me the wrong way. The GPS for for. Um, for our, the one with Telogis on it. Uh, Randy, my Rand McNally, took me right in the same area. I, I should have turned on the road he told me to turn on. But Jill took me to a dirt lot that wasn't even a dirt lot. It was just grass. I mean, there's no way anything there. So you could see the tire place up on the right. And I'm like, the first entrance I saw looked like it might have gone to, you know, I mean, they got to have one of the things to make tires is oil, right? And then there's other, I don't know what all goes in it, but I know oil is one of them and other chemicals, right? So I figured that looked like it might have been where tanker trucks go up. There was no signs, nothing. So, but I could see the building up there, big building. So I'm like, okay, not my turn because Jill didn't tell me to turn there. I could have turned there, would have got there a lot quicker. Uh, I must have drove an extra three miles because of the stupidity. Because, I mean, the lot was like, it, this place is huge. So I passed by another entrance. It looked like it might be an employee entrance, but, I mean, it was it was a big, big entrance, like a regular roadway. Uh, didn't say anything about truck's entrance there either. Usually, I mean, if you go to these places, look for the sign that says truck entrance. Always look for the sign that says truck entrance. Um, I did look at this place on Google Maps before I got there, and it looked like it was under construction. But then again, when I got there, it looked like it was still under construction. It looked almost the same, so it might have been like that for God knows how long. So anyway, between the, the second road and the main drag that took you to the highway, the navigation system said, you're here. I'm like, no, I'm not, because there's nothing here. I can't turn here. So I was like, okay, this is the third time this has happened to me this week where I have been navigated to a spot where I missed my turn and I had to turn around. <laughs> this has been a fun week for turning around, I'll tell you what. So, um, I mean, I missed I missed a gas station because the turn-ins for the gas, and I've been there before, but it's been a month or so, I think, or last week, maybe, I don't even know. I don't know, but, you know, I, I missed my turn to the gas station. I missed my turn for um, the lady that sent me. She's like, you need to slow down before you get to this, or when you see this, you need to start slowing down. I started slowing down. She didn't tell me anything like, you really need to slow down. She needed to say, you really need to slow down because right after the trees is where you're at. I mean, I passed by the trees, and bam, there was the road. Seriously? Now I gotta find a place to turn around. Every place I went to, though, I mean, the gas station, I went on down to the next exit and turned around and came back on the highway and and uh, took the gas station. This one I turned, 
I thought I had a spot it didn't look good so I decided to go ahead and go further down the road and so on anyway um, turnarounds are fun don't do it on a two lane you cannot <laughs> don't even try it because that would be stupid I had one where it looked like I had three lanes but that wasn't happening I mean I pulled over to the right I looked at it I said no I'm, I'm not even gonna do that that would be I'm gonna end up looking uh, like one of our rookie drivers or a swift driver or a CR England driver or any of them other drivers that uh, they always make fun of you know I mean we're not exempt they make fun of us too so I've seen it we just had one that couldn't cross under underneath an 11 foot 6 bridge 11 foot 6 wait the 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 sign on the trailer says 13 foot 6 does that mean I can fit So I got there, and it's another Fort Knox security. I, okay, okay, I'm sorry. I turned right on the main drag, and there was another entrance with a sign about the size of a shoebox, a small shoebox. Uh, not a small shoebox. A small sign. Uh, if it was dark, you would have missed it. Glad it was daylight. It said truck entrance. So I pulled in there. I would have pulled in there anyway because uh, that was the last spot I could have pulled in before getting on the highway. So I pulled in there and uh, had to drive a quarter mile, at least a quarter mile. It might have been half a mile. So I go in, you know, this is like a neighborhood, except it's a huge warehouse thingy. Like, kind of like IP or whatever, you know. I mean, if you've ever been there, you go in there and where they do the wood pulp and all that, the, the manufacturing locations and the sawmill. They, uh, those places are huge too. I mean, there's one we go to where you go to the right and your pickup's right there on the right, but it's a one way. So when you leave, you have to go about another mile to get to a security gate to get out. This was almost the same thing. Had to drive about a quarter to half a mile, got there to the gate, get your license. They will hold on to this. You take this badge, and then when you come back through, you get your license back when you give us the badge back go around, go down there, go all the way to the end, and then pull in there, and then we'll inspect your trailer, and and then they'll tell you what to do. So I pull in there, guy took 10 minutes to bring his, well, it might not have been that long, bring his butt around and inspect my trailer. I don't know what he was looking for, he didn't say nothing. He just said, pull it over there next to this trailer, and then back up to that trailer, but don't get into it, because that's the one I think is yours. And then go in this door and take a left. Then it's the first door on the left. And then took them forever. It took me 40 minutes in there to get a trailer and get out of there. So I lost a lot of time. A lot of time. I thought I was going to have enough time to make it to Rasaka. Whatever you call that. Uh, I instead end up in uh, the truck stop before that. On the way back from... Tennessee going towards Georgia on I-24 because the traffic on I-24 right there right there before you get to see I don't, I don't even know <laughs> I don't know the name of that town I haven't been through it enough times but it gets pretty bad there and usually you have to stay in the lane that Schneider doesn't want you to ride in not the slow lane because the slow lane doesn't go anywhere and people branch off and then it ends. Uh, it, it's ridiculous the way the traffic is set up there. And then I uh, ran through, there was an accident, passed by that. That cost me a good bit of time. So, And then I looked at my clock and I'm like, well, I could take a break. I had another 30 minute break I could have took, but I would have gained 12 minutes on my drive line. And... Uh, that was pointless. I mean, by the time I got to the truck stop I was at, I had 45 minutes, I think, left. And if I'd have stayed and then went on, the next truck stop was already listed as full, um, which would have got me 50, if I had 45, it would have got me 57 minutes to drive to go to a truck stop that's already full. Schneider doesn't pay for parking. So I'm not going to wear myself out trying to find a place to park when you won't even pay for parking. Anyway, so that's that. I got up in the morning, came here, 380 more miles or something like that. Boy, that was a long drive, man. Almost six hours. 
and there was and and so I got up early enough to get through the traffic in Atlanta. I knew I was going to be going through there at 5 a.m. So I was like, I ain't worried about traffic there. I get through there, get past, get towards Macon, and right about there in Macon, somebody had flipped their car over. I mean, it, there's no traffic on the road, people. Slow your butts down. There ain't nothing that's that big of a hurry that you got to be driving and it can in such a way that you're going to end up flipping your car over. I mean, you got to be pretty. Uh, I don't know what happens. I've seen some stupid stuff though. You know, you, you just these people drive like maniacs. There's no sense in it. It doesn't get you anywhere faster. Trust me. I can sit up here all day watching this stuff. You're going to jump one car ahead, and what are you going to save? You're not going to save anything. <laughs> see it all the time. You ain't saving Jack, buddy. Trust me. You end up in the exact same spot my 63 mile an hour governed truck is in. Every day. All day long. Alright, so that is Monday through half a day Thursday. Now I'm going to see if I can't get out of here and get a load. i got to call my DVL and see what's going on. But I'll add on to this in a minute. Or 24 hours of worth of minutes. <laughs> Alright, so last day of the week, Friday, I got a trip. Let's see, I was parked in Richmond Hill at the TA because there was nothing came up from Midway. Uh, I sat what, at, right near those DCs in Midway up Sunbury for about three hours, called my DBL, told him I'm going to park at a truck stop. And uh, he basically told me it was kind of dead. And I know if last, the Friday before that, they had like a hundred tenders or whatever they call them that uh, they just didn't have. So drivers were waiting. So <clears throat> went to the truck stop, camped there overnight. Some yummy papa. I love me some papa. Good chicken. I need. They need Bojangles. They need better restaurants in these truck stops. But yeah. Um. So I stayed there and I got a trip. A trip came across the board like I don't know an hour before. No, it wasn't even then. My time had completely run out. So you know, I I still had I think six on my clock before my time ran out and. three wasted sitting there at Midway and then went to the truck stop and the rest of it wasted sitting there. I kept refreshing every 30 minutes. <laughs> Nothing. So then before the end of the night though, before I, I went to sleep, I had a trip on the board coming from, uh, where were we at? Uh, way down past Hinesville. There's a distribution facility. Uh, yeah, they're everywhere on the, in the United States. Could be anywhere in Hinesville. It wasn't in Hinesville. It was past Hinesville to the other side and uh, I got bit by mosquitoes like crazy and uh, it was a pickup supposedly takes them like an hour to live load it was a live load and then relay at the yard um, so I grabbed that got there um, was issued PPE I got my own safety sunglasses but uh, they issued me a hard hat and a breathing apparatus I've been in chemical facilities before. Uh, the thing with breathing apparatuses is if you have any kind of hair on your face, it's not going to get a seal around any of this. That's why they want you to shave when you're in the tanker division in bulk because it, it ain't going to get a seal. Now you could have like a Hitler mustache <laughs> and it'll get a seal, but uh, it's about the only one or really shortened a shortened 70s porn star mustache yeah that might work but uh, yeah if you can't get a seal you're you're gonna die anyway or breathe the chemicals that are gonna poison you for the rest of your life and uh, be hospitalized or whatever live off of social security or welfare or something for the rest of your life and gonna be poor and destitute and all that good stuff hey but anyway uh, I digress anyway so um, got that load it did take about an hour. I mean, I sat there for a good 30 minutes before it even touched my trailer, but they knocked it out quicker than 
something really quick. Quicker than the Roadrunner Coyote. <laughs> so, got that. Came back here. I mean, it was an hour to get there, an hour to get back. That's a, That was another 100 miles. I drove like 1,800-something miles last week, so I wasn't too worried about income potential for the full week because the first four days were rocking it. Had me up in um, um, what was it Mississippi, Alabama, whatever I said before. I mean, I just bouncing back and forth and back and forth. And dude, I'll do that all day long if I can make some money. So by the end of the week, I knew it was going to be bad, but I didn't realize it was going to be that bad. They sent me back here. They already had my RTW on me. So I got here, and nothing showed up. So I called DBL. Mine's out till Monday due to um, hanging out with other people that you know take a couple of days off. Or so I called up there, and the new guy that they have up there told me that um, it was funny because he called out. And he said, "Well, this one here. Did you do you see this one on here?" And it was it ended in one eight seven murder. So uh, I said uh, one eight seven, the one that uh, drops here at Schneider. And he said, "Yeah." I said, "All right, I just got done with that." And he said, "Oh, well, you got something saying the twenty fourth on there." like that must be my RTW so it was on there and it didn't show up so I was like okay I did all my stuff did my post trip packed my car got everything ready still wasn't on there so I left I, it's, if my return to work's on there there's no point sticking around because they're not going to give you anything else they've already assigned you out of there I mean if you don't uh, you don't see it and they told you it's in there get on out man um, I left uh, I went and stopped and grabbed a bite on the way home. It takes me an hour to get home from here. So stopped and get a bite, got home. Uh, all that took maybe an hour and a half, and it finally showed up. So I would have been sitting here for an hour and a half. I'm about to call my DBL. This is Monday morning and see what's up because there's still nothing there, and I'm thinking if there is, it's hung up like it has been doing. Um, I just rebooted my handheld, handheld device. Yeah, I guess a tablet for me because I have big hands as a handheld device. Anyway, that's it for last week. Uh, settlement going to be around $800, I think, before anything comes out. So on about 1,800 miles, about 10% taken off, so about 1,600 miles a day, which is about average. Um, so y'all can figure that. If you don't like, uh, if you don't like it, go somewhere else where you get practical miles. It's always one of the things you want to look for. Practical miles, no slip seating, and if you, any of y'all don't know, slip seating is where you drive the truck and someone else drives the truck, because if you're not a sloppy person and you get to work for a slip seat company, I guarantee you're going to be paired with a sloppy person, because, well, I can't guarantee you that, but I see a lot of complaints about that. Anyway, I'm out. I, uh, I got to call my DBL and have a blessed week. Well, can't say weekend. <laughs> can't say it. have a blessed weekend because the weekend's over. It's already Monday. Sorry this is so late. Um, I don't know. I, I, I made most of the video ahead of time and now I just, I don't know. Anyway, keep the left door closed. Keep your hammer down, y'all.